Hey, thanks so much for tuning into the Mixed Church YouTube channel. I hope that this message uh, encourages you, helps you uh, to follow Jesus in your life. If you would like to financially contribute to Mixed Church and the mission that we have, which is to experience life together in Jesus and to be together for all, you can do so um, by going to mix.church slash give or you can download the app. The app is the best way to get connected to Mixed Church and you can also give financially through that. I hope you enjoy this message. So we're in this book called James, um, written by a guy named um, Jeffrey. And uh, I'm just kidding, it's James. Um, and if you've ever spent time in the, the book of James, which I highly recommend you do, um, seeing as we're spending a, a few weeks here, um, you will notice the very unique tone uh, that uh, James has as he communicates. Um, we, we picked up on this a little bit last week if you were here for um, the message uh, called Almond uh, Faith. And, um, and we, uh, James was very, very, very blunt about um, the authenticity of faith. He, he said very clearly, it's one of the most clear scriptures um, in, in the New Testament, certainly, where he just says, faith without works is dead. Faith without action is not, it's not alive, it's, it's useless. He, he goes on to kind of have a little conversation um, with himself. He says, what good is it if you know someone who is in need um, and you say to them, uh, be warm and well-fed? What good is it to say to them, be warm and well-fed, if you have what they need to be warm and well-fed and you don't help them out? And then he answers his own question and he says, it's no good. It, 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 it's, not, it's, it's no good. Some might say, well, it's the thought that, that counts. James is like, no, nah, not really. Not when you can do something about it. The thought towards them to be warm and well-fed, that doesn't count much if you are not putting your well wishes to work. And he says it's the exact same thing with faith. If you don't put it to work, what good is it? He answers it. It's no good. It's useless. It's very clear. If there's, if there's um, no more obvious of an example of just this blunt communication, you'll find it in um, how he kicks off uh, this letter. Um, for comparison, if you look at how Paul opens up um, uh, many of his letters, um, Paul will usually open up and he'll, he'll say who he is. Hey, it's Paul. And then um, he says who he's writing to. And then he usually throws in, you know, some nice words. Um, like, for instance, let's go to Philippians, how he opens up the, the letter of Philippians. He says, this Paul and Timothy, servants of Jesus Christ, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons, colon. And then he goes into some, some nice Nice little things he has to say. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you. Oh, uh, in all my prayers for you, uh, for all of you, I always pray with joy. Um, on the, uh, oh, it keeps on going. He just keeps going because of all your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work and you will carry it out in the completion of the day of Christ Jesus. It's like, oh, like we always, you know, kind of, think that Paul's just so hard No, It's like, dude, come on, man. He's got some nice little things to say. James, on the other hand, it's, uh, on the other hand, he opens up his letter um, this way. He, he says this. He says, James, okay, so it's James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes scattered among the nation's colons. And here's what he has to say. Um, next slide. Greetings. <laughs> dude, dude writes like my parents text. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about? I stopped sending my mom like long happy birthday texts a few years ago because I'd, I'd send out this massive paragraph about how much she means to me, how much she shaped my life. She responds back, THX. <laughs> like, couldn't even, couldn't even spell it out. So busy, mom. Shout out to you, mom, dad in Florida. Um, another person that, that James reminds me of is a guy that I knew down in Oklahoma. I lived down in Oklahoma for just about a year. Um, and I, I would say that he's a friend of mine, not really my friend, because the only time that we hung out, I was paying him to do so. Um, his name uh, is Scott Doe, and he was my personal trainer. Um, uh, like James, Scott was not one for small talk. Uh, in fact, there were quite a few occasions where, you know, we would be in between sets, and um, surprisingly to you, I was chatting and talking. <laughs> And many a time he would have to stop me and, and he would say, hey, we're here to work. We're here to work. Uh, he was very, very blunt with me most of the time. It really got amplified, and this part is going to surprise you and make you laugh a little bit. 
Um, it really amplified when I asked him to train me for a bodybuilding physique show that I had signed up for. That's right, folks. Uh, prior to giving my life to the gospel, uh, I was hopping up there in board shorts and doing a little twirl, because that's all you did in physique. Physique is very different from bodybuilding. I know you guys don't know this. Physique, it's board shorts. It's not the little, I don't even know what that was called, but I saw one look at that. I was like, nah, I ain't got that much confidence. Uh, uh, <laughs> and and, and, and when, when he was training for me for that, um, he, he would, there were times where we'd get done with our 50-minute session. As we were wrapping up, you'd say, good job. Now go finish up with an hour on the Stairmaster. Have y'all ever been on a Stairmaster? Hour. 15 minutes will make you question the existence of God, okay? When Paul says that we don't battle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and rulers, he's talking about a Stairmaster, Okay? <laughs> And I would just nod my head. I'd go, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is Scott Doe. This is, this is Scott Doe, IFBB Pro, a professional in the International Federation of, of Bodybuilding. I would just, like so many times, I would just have to take his word for it. Um, another way that I, I would have to take his word for it was, you know, one of the few things that he would say during our workouts as, as we were lifting, as I was lifting, um, is he would say, um, you're doing good. You're getting stronger. It's so one of the few things they would say, you're doing good, keep going. And, and I would be, I'd be out on, over on the press and, and pressing 315 or 225, it's hard to remember. Uh, and, and he would be over the top and he'd be spotting me and he'd be looking down on me and, he, and he'd be saying, you're, you're doing good, you're, you're getting strong. And I would have to take his word for it because as I was repping out, the thought that was going through my head was, I, I sure am glad you think so. Because it does not feel like I'm getting very strong right now. And, and he would just, he would speak over me and he would say, you're, you're doing good. There were times where, where Scott would uh, allow me to, to push to the point of failure where, where he would be, you know, where he would have to curl the 500 pounds on the bar. Dude, I'm going to have this up to about 1,000 pounds by the end of the story, okay? So just buckle up. And, 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 and we would get done and I would get off the bench and I'd be, you know shaking out the lactic acid in my chest, and, and he would say, that was good, that was good. I know you, that was successful. He'd say, I know you were struggling there, but, but that, was really, that was really good. And as I look back on my time training under Scott, um, I realized that for as much as he was training you know, my body, teaching me how to, to work out my muscles, um, the real workout happened in my mind, where he was he was training my mind how to view the process. He, he was, again, there were, there were times where, where I'd be benching, he'd be saying, you're, you're doing good, you're, you're doing good, you're, you're getting stronger. And he was trying to train my mind to, uh, to take on a perspective towards the workout that I was not necessarily having. He was shaping my perspective as much as he was showing me how to shape my pecs. Um, I, I don't think James, there's no biblical evidence um, that, that James, uh, you know, was at all interested in personal training. However, um, based on the writings of James, I'm pretty positive um, that he could have had his own gym and, and own line of, of supplements. Because in a very Scott Doe-ish manner, James comes out of his one-word introduction, greetings, and goes right into one of the most perspective-shaping scriptures in the New Testament when he said this. Let's go to our scripture again. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet various kinds of trials, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. I know you all probably didn't come in your gym clothes, but do you mind if we step into the weight room for a little bit? The, do a little bit of faith training. Not going to show you how to build your muscles, but talk about how to build your faith. Because just like last week, we discovered that James made it crystal clear that our faith has to work in order for it to be real. Our faith has to be active in order to validate its authenticity. James comes in hot at the beginning of this letter and makes it very, very clear that if we want to develop, if we want to get stronger in our walk with Jesus, if we want to, to grow, we have to work out our faith. 
Here's how one um, commentator put it, and this is really kind of what got my mind going in this direction. He's, uh, the commentator said, like a muscle that becomes strong when it faces resistance, so Christians learn to remain faithful to God over the long haul only when they face difficulty. And if anyone knew about difficulties, it was the initial audience that, that James was writing to. Again, we talked about this last week. He's writing to a predominantly Jewish audience who has recently put their faith in Jesus. And because they are Jewish, yet they have chosen to follow the ways of Jesus, they have been facing persecution from other Jews who were not all that into the ways of Jesus. And, and as I dug into this, you, you discover that the, the audience he's writing to, they were, they were facing difficulty every single day they, because of their faith, not because they had done anything wrong, not because they had made a mistake, but literally they made a decision to follow Jesus. And as a result, the fruit, the impact of that decision to follow Jesus was difficulty. Because these Jewish Christians, they were, um, uh, uh, some of them were having their wages withheld from them by their employers because of their faith in Jesus. So some of them were literally getting um, dragged into court and taken advantage of because they were Christians. And James is not, he, he, he is not thousands of miles away disconnected. He, he is not in another world writing to the other side of the world about him, how things are. James understands. He gets it. He's going through it himself. But James also understands, he, he, he gets the weight that, that they're under. He understands the pressure that they're going through. He's able to empathize with them. But James, like a good personal trainer, also has a picture of what that pressure can produce. He, he's, also got, he's also got insight on, on how the weight can develop them. He, he's also got an understanding about all of this persecution, these difficulties, these, these troubles that they're, they're facing. He knows what the impact of it can be on their life in God. And so he says very boldly, you got to count it as joy. Consider it pure joy. It's good. The, um, the Greek phrase that James uses here, count it uh, all joy or, or consider it pure joy, it is emphasizing um, the intensity of a particular mindset and not, not so much the exclusivity of a particular mindset. In other words, he's saying, you are going to have to fight for this perspective of calling these things joy because there are going to be other perspectives available. You, you, are, you are going to have to get intense about this. You, you, you are going to, you're going to have to get a little gritty. Your face is going to have to get a little bit gritty. Because again, you are going to, you're, the, the illustration is you're here, you're, you're, you're pressing out uh, 315. And it's not going to feel like it's good. Come on, have y'all ever worked out? It's going to feel painful. The thought in your mind is going, to be, is going to be, is this really working? Come on, who, who's real? Who's real with me? Working out. Is this working? Always wondering. Is, is this going to work? You're going to have these thoughts in your mind. You're going to wonder, is this just a meaningless struggle? Why, why, why am I going through this? And James is saying, no, 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 no. It's good. You got to call it good. Consider it pure joy. You, you, you got to change your perspective towards it. You, you got to get intense about it. You, you, got, you got to be your own personal trainer and just say, this is good. I'm getting stronger. This is good. I'm getting stronger. If, if, uh, if James was a personal trainer, he'd say, he'd say you got to get ugly face about this. How many of y'all got an ugly face when you work out? Be honest. Oh, come on. You got a pretty face. You do. It's pretty ugly when you're on a treadmill. Right? Come on. That's why we're so embarrassed when we see people at the gym. Red face, plus we all, we all got ugly faces. The attitude that James is, is, is challenging us to employ is one that you got to get a little bit ugly face sometimes with it because, because you are pushing against what feels natural. You are violating your natural inclination towards what you are going through. You get a little ugly face about it. 
Come on, how many of y'all know you, you might be walking through it and the word for you to do is do it ugly. Keep going. Keep pushing through. James would say, get your little ugly face and keep moving. Get, put your ugly face on. Don't worry about how it looks from the outside. Keep moving forward. And for some of you, that is your word today. Where, where your faith in action is just hold on. Sit tight. Wait. Faith, faith in God working itself out, it's not these big, audacious, huge, life-changing decisions. Sometimes it's waking up in the morning and you're in the middle of the storm and you're saying, I'm going to just stay in the boat, God. I'm just going to sit right here. I, I know we brag about Peter, step out of the boat. That I, I've recently been challenged by, uh, uh, someone was preaching about this. Those other dudes had faith too. Stay in the boat. Wait for Jesus to step back in. Where we start saying, this is good. Somebody say, this is good. Here's the other part, because this is how we grow. This is good. It's how we grow. This is good. I'm saying, it's not good in the moment. It's not good at the start. We're not talking about the start. We're talking about the impact. This is good because it's how we grow. Not the challenging part of this message. That was the encouraging part. Because the temptation uh, uh, with this message is to um, exclusively apply it, the process by which we grow, only to the problems and the pain and the heartache and, and the disappointment and the very negative aspects of life. And again, for J James, his, his initial audience, that is what they would have likely done because that was their life. His initial audience, they, they would have read the Greek word for trial and they would have thought, yeah, I got dragged to court. I got dragged into trial and got taken advantage of. They, they, their mind would have, would have just immediately gone to the gross mistreatment that they had been encountering. That, that's what their life was filled with. Their minds would have immediately conjured up example after example of hurt and pain and affliction because that's what their life was full of and yet those are not the only trials James is talking about again James said back to verses two and three he, he said count it all joy my brothers when you meet various uh, kinds of trials trials of various kinds for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness did anyone uh, grow up memorizing uh, this verse in the, the KGV the King James version like like I did uh, it goes, uh, consider pure joy, my brethren, when you fall into divers temptations. Anyone ever remember that one? Divers temptations. I, for the longest time, I like read that and I was like, he must be talking to a very oceanic community. A lot of time, watch out for them divers. They're scuba diving gear. They'll grab you, pull you down to the, the abyss. Um, and then I realized last week, He's not talking about diverse. He's talking about a diversity of trials. Again, just like our opening text put it, is that there's various kinds. And so, yes, check the box. The hardship that you are encountering right now, yes, that fits. Fits the category. It's a trial. Pain, check. Disappointment, check. Let down, set, setbacks, check. Check your heart. Your heartache is, is is account for heartache. Sorry, I said it. That was kind of funny. All of a sudden, my mental picture was a heart-shaped cake. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't gonna be able to let that one go. All right, back to that serious moment I was doing. Um, those are all accounted for. But mixed church, don't miss this. There are a lot of other trials and tests out there. Back to what we we talked about last week. We learn that faith has two ingredients. There are two parts to faith. It is belief and it is behavior. It, it is when you believe something so much that it impacts how you behave. It, 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 is, it is when you, you, you trust something, you trust mentally in your heart. I trust that, that you entrust, you trust, you trust God mentally, but then you entrust him with your life. You entrust him with the situation. You, you entrust him with the ways that, that you're moving forward. Faith is, is when you believe something to be so true 
that it influences what you do. And so therefore, these trials that James is talking about, that he's referring to, are those moments in life when you have to work out your faith. Trials are, are when you have to decide whether or not you are going to behave based on your beliefs or not. A trial is, is any moment when you have to decide whether or not you are going to live according to what God says is true or not. And James says there are various kinds of trials. There is a, there is a lot of diversity in how your faith can work out. Another one of the things that Scott Doe challenged me with happened when um, we were going through the initial consultation. I went into his gym and he was getting to know me and my history, fitness uh, history and all that. And he was like, um, you know, so, so break down for me. What's your, what's your workout routine like? And so I started, I was like, well, my split, because that's a word that we use. Um, I said, you know, I do, I do buys and tries on one day. I do uh, back and chest on another day. And then um, I do uh, shoulders and abs another day. And he said, okay, keep going. And I, I said, that's about it. <laughs> Do you know where this is going? Yeah. He said, when is your leg day? And I said, you know, you know, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't really do legs, you know. He's like, you don't work out your legs. I said, yeah. I like play basketball and, you know. It's a lot of, and sometimes I get really low, feel that the next day. He went on to say that, that if I were to train under him, I was going to have to add a leg day to my routine. He furthermore educated me on why, and, and he said, um, number one, it's like whenever you work out your muscles, whenever you're, you're, you're weightlifting, you're, 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 you're uh, uh, putting your muscles under, under tension, um, it increases uh, the production of testosterone in your body, which if you don't know, is very helpful for building muscle, getting stronger. And he said because the legs are such a massive muscle group in the body, it provides an amazing opportunity to increase your T levels and also improve your overall strength. Secondly, he said, he said, when you strengthen your legs, you're going to be surprised by this, but you're actually all, by strengthening your legs, the other core lifts that you're doing, like bench press, those are actually going to get stronger too because they all start with your base. They, they, all, they all start with your legs. And if you keep avoiding leg day, you are going to be uh, 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 preventing yourself but from experiencing potential growth. James said there are various kinds of trials. There is a vast diversity of ways you can work out your faith. Here's what I'm wondering today, church, is what is your life's leg day? What, I'm not talking about muscles, you know, parts, muscles. I'm talking about what is the area of your life? If you were to allow me to come in as a personal faith trainer and I was going to ask you about your routine, which area of your life would be the one that you would go, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, I do, I do, I do, you know, I do them. Sometimes I'll do those ones twice a, twice a week. Well, I mean, I, I play basketball, I do, I, but I do this. Yeah, about that like day. One, one of the great tragedies with this scripture, y'all, is when we assume that James is only talking about the hardships, the painful seasons of our life, when, when, when we get thrown underneath the weight, when we're pushed up against the wall and you just got to press through. And again, let me remind you, your faith is going to go grow through those seasons. Your faith is going to grow through those, those situations where we're going to mature through that. You're, you're, you're going to come closer to Jesus as you continue to follow him through those very problem-filled seasons of, of, of life. But those are not the only exercises to grow your faith. The, let me show you something. So 
bench press, this is a combo, all right? Let me show you a little something. Not only can you bench press on this, but this is also a squat rack as well. And for some of us, we need to mature from just having a faith that shows up when we're pressed. We, we need to mature from the level of faith that only shows up when we're hurting. And we need to graduate to, here's, here's what we're calling it, squat rack faith. Where you're good, but you are willingly starting to work out your faith in the area of your life that you are not so inclined to work it out in. Squat rack faith. I started thinking about why, why, why did it take me so long to employ legs to my, my workout? Because I've been working out for three or four years before I met Scott. And I, and I came up with two reasons. I was thinking back. The two reasons why I avoided leg day was, number one, was because I had done them. And they're just so painful. Such a big muscle group. Come on, doms. Delayed onset muscle soreness. Not Dom, that beautiful bass player back there. <laughs> doms, you... you you walk different. Leg day people in the house, you walk in a little shifty for the next couple days when you do legs. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. And the second reason is though, even though that working out legs hurt the most, you want to know what was frustrating? It was noticed the least. Work that you can work out for a year and it is very unlikely you are going to be walking around and someone's going to be like, dude, you're hammies. What? Curls? Bent over curls? Donkey kicks? What are you doing? And I wonder what the area of your life is. Ooh, that's gonna hurt. It's gonna make you walk a little different. You start working out that faith there. Ooh, that's gonna, that's gonna make you stagger a little bit. Might even sting for a few days. Because you ain't never flexed that muscle before. I didn't even know that piriformis thing was there. And no, one, no one's going to know. I'm talking about private faith. <laughs> that, that was a good thing that happened in COVID. I had gotten so used to going to the gym, and then COVID said, and all the gyms closed down. And I had to get used to working out by myself. Additionally, I, I had to, we didn't have any really any weights in the house. And you know what I realized is that you can do a whole lot of stuff with just body weight. You don't always need something pressing down on you. There's a lot of stuff you can do in private. There's a lot of ways to flesh out our faith. It's just me and Jesus. I'm opening up God's word and by faith, I'm gonna start leaning into his word. Do I know that his word is gonna work? No, but I believe it will. And so therefore I'm gonna employ my faith and I'm gonna get into it. I'm talking y'all about this faith that goes beyond having faith for the setbacks. That's good, you're gonna grow. But you know, you can also work out your faith and how you pursue success. Where you start inviting God into the conversation about your career goals. And you got all this ambition and you got this five, 10 year plan. That's so good. But what if you just start saying, I'm going to start working out faith here and I'm going to, I'm going to put it all in pencil, not pen. I'm going to write it all down in pencil and then I'm going to go, God, I entrust you with my life. I, I, I really, God, I, I want to surrender my plans to you. Holy Spirit, I want you to direct my steps. And if some of this stuff is stupid, selfish, or going to sidetrack me from walking with you and in your purpose, would you mind showing me which one of those things I need to scratch off? I'm talking about a faith that, that, that is bigger than your pain. Again, that's amazing. That's what faith is for. And some of you, you are right there. Every time I say pain, it's like, yep, yeah, that's where I'm at. But then there's others of us that you, you're not in pain. And you got to start working out your faith with the purpose of your finances. Leg day. Talking about leg day right now. Because no one knows. No one knows. We don't even pass buckets at this church anymore. No one knows. Used to be a day where you could. No one will know. Going down to the basement. It's just you. Working it out. Faith for when you're, you're hurt. Absolutely. But what type of faith are you working out 
when you're healed, when you're strong. Oh, y'all, this is gonna, sh- this is gonna be sharp. Um, one of the pitfalls for us as Jesus followers, I've been there, I know what this is like, so I, I'm talking to myself is when the only time we are in the metaphorical gym working out our faith is when we are there for PT. The only time we're working it out is when we're banged up. Only time we're falling on our knees before God is when we're overwhelmed and hurting. There's faith for that. And I'm, there, there's someone that, that's you. There's faith for that. But man, if we would learn to love the gym when we're strong, if we would just learn to love the ways of God, not after we run into a dead end and we turn, but hey, we're, things are good. Various kinds of trials, diversity of trials. Y'all, when you think of, uh, of faith as a muscle, all of life is a gym. So many opportunities. He said, count it as joy. It's a good thing. And so what if we started to tune our our eyes for the good things? What are the good things? Ways to try out our faith. Oh, I can try my faith out in that relationship. Oh, I can try my faith out in in that brokenness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can try my faith out in my finances. I I can try my faith out with how I've been uh, talking to my my, my boss. And and I know, and I know that I need a lot of faith there, okay? Because I don't like how they have been using their frustration towards me. But oh, I can flex my faith there. Oh, where where could we flex our faith, y'all? And get this, James, James cast in a pretty unbelievable uh, um, goal for this. Because he, he says, he goes on to say, and he, he says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And then he says, let steadfastness have its full effect. He's saying, keep doing it. Just keep doing it. <laughs> you can't do it for a little bit. Store it all up. You, you got to keep doing it. Believe it or not, I know a guy who I was talking to, an older gentleman, and, and we we're talking about, you know, exercise. And I was like, yeah, did you work out? He's like, I did that for 50 years. I was like, and that was his reason for not working out. I did that. I did my time. The gym is, gym is not a jail, and faith is not a prison. You don't spend your time there. And I did my time. I'm good now. Now I can do whatever that I want. James says, keep doing it. Let it have its full effect. What's its full effect? This is huge, y'all. He says that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. That's pretty bold, James. That, that's confidence right there. As we work out our faith in God, as we hold to what we believe to be true, our faith grows, we grow. We grow, we develop, we get stronger and get this. As our faith in God grows and we depend on him more and more what you begin to realize is that you need this world and what the world has to offer you less and less and so we work out our faith work it out just a little bit start start flexing that little faith muscle question the challenging question here is what what if instead of focusing on what we need for ourselves, we started asking, where do I need to work out my faith? It's full body faith, y'all. Full body faith. It's still January, so let's get, you know, kind of reflective about this new year, right? Because that's something magical happens on New Year's Eve. But let's just, let's just use it for our advantage. Man, what if this year was a full body faith type of year? You didn't, you didn't wait. What if, what if, what if you didn't wait till chaos knocked on your door and within the comfort of life right now, because it's good. What if you're like, all right, time to go to the gym. What if we were in a top heavy church? What if we were a church that had some strong legs working out that stuff that you want to know what? Maybe people won't notice. That's not why I'm doing it. Stand with me, church. Band is gonna lead us through this reprise. And again, the, the goodness of God's word is, is that he's speaking to all of us, but he is not giving every single one of us the same message. 
the overall message of, of this um, song uh, is, you know, another in the fire. It's, the, it's the, pic, the Old Testament picture, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, again, thrown into the furnace. Why? Because of their faith. And Jesus showing up in the middle of it, protecting them, allowing them to somehow survive this furnace and walk from it. All right, some of y'all are in the furnace and that's all you need to hear right now. The word for you is hold tight. The word for you is lean in. The word for you is keep believing. The word for you is have faith. Keep calling out to them. Keep leaning into the community of believers. Keep, go, go find your Shadrach and say, dude, are you here? I'm, uh, dude, I just need to know, are you here? Okay, for others of you, you have stepped from the furnace. It's time to have after furnace faith. And during this song, as we're talking about fire, we're saying, thank you so much, God, for bringing me out of the fire. Time to develop my faith walk. Time to start working it out in the areas ooh, that make me cringe. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence. God, I believe that you've spoken. If not, you've just spoken to me. You've challenged me through this word. God, I ask that, that in these moments um, that, that we just lean into um, who you are and, and what you have for us, that, that you would just challenge us during this time. God, that, that you would uh, oppose us if we need you to. That if we are not walking in a way that honors you, if we are not walking in a, in a way that, that is connected to, to our, our beliefs in who you are and what you have said to be true, God, that would, you, you have permission to come and get in our way. You have permission, Holy Spirit, to, to, to spur us, to convict us, because God, we just want to walk with you. And faith, faith is how we do so. We pray this in your name.